this is this is uh, Mehmet Akif Akul from Bingol University, Turkey. Uh, I'm doing research uh, in differential geometry for um, students. I would like to introduce myself. Uh, today, uh, I will give a talk on uh, new developments on Riemannian maps in complex geometry. Uh, this talk is supported by the Scientific and Technological Council of Turkey. Uh, do you see my screen? Dr. Alia, do you see my screen? No, uh, no sir, no sir. Okay, let me. Yes, try let one more share, time. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen. Screen Do you see now? Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, my talk will uh, consist of uh, three sections. Uh, actually, the main sections are uh, two and three. Uh, the first section uh, motivations for the topics, and the second one is uh, conformal Riemannian maps, and the third one is pointwise Riemannian maps and after some uh, references on the topics. Uh, let me start. Uh, before my talk, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving uh, occasions uh, to talk in international webinar on application of differential geometry in India. And uh, especially, uh, I would like to thank to the uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Anand Sadiqi who uh, invited me to give this uh, nice talk. Um, geometric notions about this subject. In my talk, uh, I will uh, actually focus on uh, two uh, important uh, subjects. One of them is Riemannian maps and the other one is uh, conformal Riemannian maps. In differential geometry, the main method in order to compare two geometric objects and transfer certain structure from a manifold to another manifold is to define appropriate transformation between them. When we have two uh, smooth manifolds, uh, the different dimensions uh, and sometimes the equal dimension it doesn't matter and the rank of the uh, differential map is equal to the dimension of the manifold then such maps are called immersions uh, and if the rank of the differential map is equal to target manifold then such maps are called submersions Moreover, if you put uh, isometry between manifolds, uh, immersion will be, uh, is called isometric immersion, and uh, the submersion is called Riemannian submersion. In, in sub immersion theory and submersion theory, uh, the isometric condition is important uh, to investigate the geometry of uh, the total space and the base space. When we consider an arbitrary map between, mani but between Riemannian manifolds, uh, isometric immersions and Riemannian submersions are very special maps between manifolds. As a generalization of these notions, Riemannian maps were introduced by Fischer. In uh, 1992, Riemannian maps between Riemannian manifolds. Uh, this notion is important for uh, geometric optics and physical optics. This topic is related to physics uh, because of the generalized uh, aconal equation. Uh, when we compare uh, the huge Riemannian maps theory, it seems that there are necessary new studies in this file. 
in 90, in 2010, uh, Professor Shahin introduced the notion of invariant and anti-invariant Riemannian maps, which are Riemannian maps from Riemannian manifolds to almost Hermitian manifolds. Uh, I would like to uh, give a brief introduction for uh, this uh, way. Uh, actually, in 2010, um, uh, Watson, uh, uh, Watson has defined the notion of almost Hermitian submersions between two almost Hermitian manifolds. And after that, you know, in uh, submanifold theory, there are many different kind of uh, submanifolds, like uh, invariant, anti-invariant, semi-invariant, slant. Uh, we can go. And uh, for uh, Riemannian submersions, we don't have, uh, actually, we haven't <laughs> any uh, uh, different analog of uh, Riemannian submersion. That's why. And my advisor, Professor Shahin, has defined uh, many new notions in this direction and opened a, a, a way for uh, all of us. Um, so uh, after he defined these notions, and uh, anti-invariant, Riemannian submersion, semi-invariant, salant, and also uh, many geometers, many geometers define many different uh, kind of submersions, and after that he defined, uh, he introduced this notion, invariant and anti-invariant uh, Riemannian maps in 2010. And after this notion, uh, of course, we uh, he defined uh, semi-invariant and slant Riemannian maps as a generalization of the, the, the above notion. And after he published a book, uh, a new book on the theories by B. Shahin, Bayram Shahin. In this book, you can find many different kind of uh, Riemannian submersions, Riemannian maps and their applications. And there are, uh, uh, I think this book uh, is, uh, will be uh, nice, <laughs> nice book in the, in, in the story. Uh, because uh, it has many different uh, definitions on the theories. Uh, let me talk about the Riemannian maps. We have two Riemannian manifolds and we have a map between them. If the rank of the differential map is bigger than zero and minus than uh, minimum the dimension of search and uh, target manifolds, and the map is horizontal space between horizontal space and range of the map it is isometrically. It means that we have this equation, so we call it F uh, is uh, called Riemannian uh, map. This uh, di diagram is really good uh, to understand this topic because uh, the source manifold consists of uh, vertical and horizontal spaces and the uh, Touches manifold is consists of a uh, range of the map and uh, the perp of the range of the perp of the range. So uh, Riemannian maps put uh, uh, horizontal vectors onto range of the map. There is a uh, isometry between them. Uh, of course, isometric immersions and Riemannian submersions is a trivial example of Riemannian maps. When when you take uh, vertical space is zero, you obtain uh, isometric immersion. When you if you have a Riemannian map and if you take vertical space is zero, so you have isometric immersion. And also, if you take the the perp of the range uh, F star. So you will get a Riemannian submersions. Um, there are many examples on that uh, in the story. You can find anywhere, uh, especially in that book. And in in Riemannian uh, submersions, and especially in Riemannian maps, uh, we have O'Neill tensors. O'Neill tensors. Uh, we have two O'Neill tensors, T and A. 
like in uh, submanifold theory, we have just one uh, one tensor file, but here uh, we have two, T and A, one and two, and uh, T is vertical, and A is uh, horizontal. T is symmetric, A is anti-symmetric. And from these uh, one and two equations, we obtain three, four, five, six. And also, T is exactly coincides with the fibers as the second fundamental form. And A is uh, the complete integrability of horizontal distribution. Uh, this is also an important uh, definition. Uh, the second fundamental of F is given by 7. In submanifold theory, we have a second, uh, second fundamental form, and uh, this, uh, this form gives us many geometrical meaning of uh, between manifolds. And also, the second fundamental form is giving us many um, geometrical meaning in this story too. And uh, eight, uh, the equation eight is a tension filed of the map uh, of the map. And uh, if the tension file is zero, we say that the map is harmonic. Uh, nine and ten exactly the same the submanifold in submanifold story when garten formula and uh, uh, the relation between shape operator and the second fundamental form uh, you know um, we have uh, uh, different we have exact we have the same geometry in Riemannian maps so if you want to understand Riemannian maps, you should learn uh, first. You should learn the submanifold theory, because in submanifold theory, um, we are starting from the submanifold story. Okay, now I introduce the conformal Riemannian maps. We, uh, I have mentioned that uh, Riemannian maps. Uh, there is a isometry between horizontal space and range of the um, map. But in conformal cases, we have a function between them. This function is uh, uh, at equals zero. So we have we call it the, this map uh, conformal Riemannian maps. In this case, uh, we have many different um, many different notions because of this lambda. First, first, uh, I can give this theorem. This theorem is uh, a main uh, theorem for this story. Uh, when we take uh, X and Y in hor horizontal space, the range of the second fundamental form uh, is defined by um, 11. In this, in this section, we can say this. In Riemannian maps, the target manifold consists of two parts and range of the map and the purpose of the range of map. So in this case, the second fundamental form has actually two parts uh, like uh, like manifolds. So one of the range of the second fundamental form and one is the uh, range of the the purpose of the range of the map. So we have range of the second fundamental form is given by 11. And uh, you can see 12, the second fundamental form consists of two parts. OK. Yes, uh, in this now I will introduce the the manifolds exactly because we are working on the manifolds between manifolds. So the first one is uh, almost Hermitian manifolds defined by 14. We have J square is um, equal to minus identity. And uh, the map is the, this manifold is called a Kahler manifold if we have 15. Now I can start my 
uh, talk exactly because the motivation motivations uh, section. I just want to uh, mention about the uh, the theory Riemannian maps and conformal Riemannian maps. Now I'm going to introduce um, three new uh, Riemannian conformal Riemannian maps. The first one in 2010, B. Shahin, Bayram Shahin, defined invariant and anti-invariant Riemannian maps. You can see in anti-invariant Riemannian maps, this map is anti-invariant Riemannian maps. Uh, M is Riemannian manifold, N is almost Hermitian manifolds. If we have these conditions, this meaning that uh, when you take any vector file in range of the map under J, the structure, almost the structure of N, uh, you will get um, this this uh, vector will be inside the path of the range. So we call it this map is an anti invariant Riemannian map. Now we can give the conformal anti invariant Riemannian map. If we take this map is a conformal Riemannian map, we obtain conformal anti invariant Riemannian map. In this case, we we, we should know that conformal Riemannian map is uh, there is a function is the deletion of the map. The deletion is uh, not equal to satisfy and um, the second condition in uh, in the definition of conformal Riemannian map. Uh, in isometry, we have uh, we save uh, distance between vector files, but in conformal case we save the angles between vector files. So the geometry is changing because of this uh, function. We have many uh, trivial examples. One of them is uh, anti-invariant manifolds, nabla equal one and vertical space, well, vertical distribution equals zero. We have uh, conformal anti-invariant Riemannian map is anti-invariant alt-manifold, sub-manifolds. And uh, nabla equal one, uh, conformal anti-invariant Riemannian map is exactly anti-invariant Riemannian map. Now I can give a proper uh, example, not anti-invariant and anti-invariant sub-manifold and anti-invariant uh, Riemannian sub motion too. We have this map, this map is conformal anti-invariant Riemannian map. You can compute the Jacobian matrix of this map, and you can see that the range of the map is equal to. Uh, it means that the the, the the range of the map is uh, bigger than zero and minor minus than uh, the dimensions of search and target manifolds. So that's why F is a conformal anti-invariant Riemannian map. So uh, the target manifold, we are in target manifold. In target manifold has a uh, geometry and uh, two, it consists of two uh, distributions. So we have 16. And also when we take a vector file in branch of the map, we have 17. So uh, in this part, we are going to talk about the geometry of uh, conformal anti-invariant uh, Riemannian maps. The range of the map uh, defines a total geodesic foliation. We have these conditions. And also uh, the part of the range of the map is totally geodesic foliation on M. We have three conditions. Uh, it means that you will take uh, two vector files in range of the map or uh, the part of the range of the map. You will the covariant derivation of them should be inside uh, the distribution range of the map or the part of the range of the map. Uh, if base manifold is locally product manifold if and only if we have these conditions. 
we know that the tension find of the map is equal zero. We say that F is harmonic. So we have three conditions. F is conformal anti-invariant Riemannian maps is harmonic if and only if we have these conditions. If uh, gradient lambda, uh, the horizontal part of gradient lambda equals zero, it means that the dilation of the uh, its dilation, the gradient of the dilation is vertical. We call it F is a horizontally homotetic conformal Riemannian map. So we, if we have this condition, then F is horizontally homotetic conformal Riemannian map. Uh, now we we are going to uh, talk about the totally geodesic map. In submanifold theory, the second fundamental form equals zero. We say that the map is total geodesic map. Uh, we have the same condition in this theory too. Uh, the second fundamental uh, form of the map equals zero. We say that uh, the map is total geodesic map. A geometric interpretation of a total geodesic map is that it maps every geodesic in the total space into a geodesic in the base space in proportion to arch lands. And so F is totally geodesic. We have two conditions. In this section, in this part, we, we take two vector files in horizontal space. We, we are trying to compute the uh, second fundamental of the map. And we, we have taken two vertical vector files, the same computation. One is vertical and one is horizontal. So it gives us uh, many different uh, equations. The second one is this. And in, in this case, uh, in this uh, part, I will talk about the weekly uh, umbilicity of uh, the map. Uh, F is a map between uh, from a Riemannian manifold to a Riemannian manifold. F is called uh, this definition uh, is uh, given by Nor uh, Nora, second fundamental of a map. Uh, in that uh, paper, there are many different kinds of uh, notions like uh, G1 uh, umbilical and second some properties of the second fundamental form you can uh, it is also a good uh, paper if we have uh, 18 we call it f is f is called strong g1 umbilical if uh, the file z equals zero uh, the dimension of horizontal space bigger than two we say f is total geodesic map and also dimension of the horizontal space bigger than two and uh, G1, the F is a G1 umbilical conformal anti-invariant Riemannian maps. We have this and the uh, following assert assertion. Also, this theorem, we have this theorem for if we put G1 umbilical CT on the conformal anti-invariant Riemannian map, we have this theorem. The second part of this uh, section is conformal semi-invariant Riemannian maps. And in 2011, Bayram Shahin defined semi-invariant Riemannian maps. When you take a Riemannian map from a Riemannian manifold to almost Hermitian manifold, if you have two distribution in the in the range of the map, D1 and D2, D1 is in, in, invariant, D2 is anti-invariant, so you, you call it F is semi-invariant Riemannian map. So in 2019, we gave uh, this definition. If you take a conformal Riemannian map from a Riemannian manifold to almost Hermitian manifold, it means that the range of the map consists of two 
distributions. One is invariant and the second one is uh, anti-invariant. We call it this map is a conformal semi-invariant Riemannian map. There are many uh, trivial examples in this section too. Just uh, I want to give a nice theorem. Uh, Actually, in 2010, uh, Bayram Shahin defined, uh, published a paper on conformal Riemannian map. In that uh, paper, uh, he computed a, a, a theorem. The theorem uh, means that you can find many different uh, kind of examples for Riemannian maps. Uh, for example, this theorem also give a way to to obtain uh, examples. Uh, F1 is conformal submersion from a Riemannian manifold to another Riemannian manifold uh, with square relation lambda and F2 is a CR immersion. So combination of them F2 combination F1 is a conformal semi invariant Riemannian map. So we are going to give uh, an example for this. This is a conformal submersion. This is a CR motion. So the combination of them is conformal semi-invariant Riemannian map. Because in uh, Riemannian map theory, uh, sometimes uh, it is hard to get an example. But this is this theorem gives us a method to obtain examples. We have uh, the same geometry in in the semi conformal semi invariant Riemannian maps. Uh, just I want to show them uh, because in this uh, in this part we have uh, in a range of the map has uh, two distribution D1 and D2. So D1 and D2 has a geometry. Uh, so that's why we are giving the theorems G D1 is total geodesic relation. We have these two conditions. D2 is total geodesic. We have these two conditions. For the geometry of range of the map, uh, we have these two, these three conditions. That uh, the first one is range of the map defines a total geodesic foliation on M2. Uh, in the same way, the range of the map defines a total geodesic foliation if we have 21. And uh, in the target manifold has a local product manifold in D1, D2, and uh, the purple of range of uh, the map. So we have these these conditions. If a uh, range of the map and the part of the range of the map has a local product manifold, we have these conditions. If and only if we have these conditions. Also, we have uh, some uh, different uh, theorems for the total geodesic foliation on M. <coughs> the harmonicity of the map we have three conditions, the fibers are minimal and B and C. Uh, I'm passing these uh, sections because uh, because of uh, in conformal anti-invariant, conformal semi-invariant, conformal slant. Now I'm going to give the definition of conformal slant. Uh, the geom is uh, changing because in anti-invariant we have just uh, two distributions and the uh, range of the map and the part of the range of the map. But semi-invariant distribution, we have um, uh, one, two, three, four distributions. D1, D2, range of the map and the part of the range of the map. And uh, all of them uh, are giving uh, geometrical meaning for the tar target manifolds. Last one uh, in this section, conformal slant Riemannian maps. Let me give the definition of it. In Bayram Shahin in 2013 uh, defines slant Riemannian maps to Kahler manifolds. 
uh, in uh, we have a vector files in uh, vertical space when we take uh, uh, under uh, f star because we are in the target um, we are in the target manifold when we take a non zero vector file in range of the map under j and the, the angle between uh, j f star x and the range of the map um, should be uh, constant. The angle should be constant. It means that uh, independent of the choice of the, the point and, and the choice of the tangent vector file. We, we, we say that f is a cylindrical manual map. When we put conformal case in the definition, we obtain conformal cylindrical Riemannian map. <coughs> There are some uh, trivial example for the conformal slan Riemannian maps to uh, vertical uh, space is equal zero and lambda equal one. The conformal slan Riemannian map is theta slant immersion and uh, theta equals zero, lambda equal one. The map is invariant Riemannian map and anti invariant Riemannian map theta equal pi over two and lambda equal one. We have anti invariant Riemannian map. And lambda equal one, we have slant Riemannian map. And theta equal two, we have conformal anti invariant Riemannian map. So now we we are going to give an example for proper case. Proper case, it means that theta is not equal zero, pi over two, and lambda not equal one. Also, we have. Uh, Mm, that uh, theorem I have mentioned in uh, in the uh, part of the conformal semi-invariant Riemannian maps. F1 is conformal submersion, F2 is slant immersion, so the combination of them is conformal slant Riemannian map. We have an example for these two. F is conformal submersion, Pi is slant immersion. The combination of them is conformal slant Riemannian maps. And the vector files in the horizontal space. Okay, now I'm going to introduce a new Riemannian maps, uh, point wise Riemannian maps. In 2012, Chen and Garai defined the point-wise slant submanifolds in almost Hermitian manifolds. Uh, this definition is different than slant submanifolds, the definition of slant submanifolds. That means that in slant submanifolds, the angle is constant. But in this definition, point-wise slant submanifolds definition, the angle of the the angle is f uh, It means that the angle is independent of the vector fight, but the, depend on the depending on the point. So theta can be regarded as a function on M. It's called it, which is called a slant function. In 2014, Lee and Shahin define point-wise slant submersion. Slant Riemannian submersion has defined by B. Shahin, by Ram Shahin. Point by slant uh, submersions, uh, in this case, theta is also a function, regarding as a function on M. The, the, the F is a Riemannian submersion. The difference between slant submersions, the angle is a function. Now, I'm giving our definition as a generalization of pointwise slants of manifolds and the pointwise slants of motions. We introduced pointwise Riemannian maps. Gindis Alp and Akyol in 2022, we defined the pointwise slant Riemannian maps. In this, in this case, we have a Riemannian map. The angle is a, can be regarded as a function. We have many examples 
for this uh, this uh, new Riemannian map to uh, the function equals zero and uh, the part of the range of the map equals zero. We have almost Hermitian submersion. Uh, the angle is e equal pi over two range of the, the part of the range of the map equals zero. We have anti invariant Riemannian submersion. Range of the part of the range of the map equals zero, and uh, we have proper pointwise slant Riemannian submersion. And also, uh, okay, and proper slant Riemannian maps is pointwise slant Riemannian maps with a constant slant function. Now we are going to give a uh, non trivial example for this uh, theory. If you have an example, uh, it is easy to uh, to get some new result, but if you don't have, maybe you can work on the uh, uh, space, but doesn't have any meaning. So uh, we have R4 in Euclidean space. We have uh, a pair of almost uh, complex structure on R4 and uh, J1 and J2. Lambda is a function on uh, R4. So we have a Riemannian map between R4 and R from R4 to R4. So this map is a proper pointwise cylinder Riemannian map. Uh, also, we have a geometry of uh, these Riemannian maps 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. The same as like a slant Riemannian maps, slant submanifold, slant submersions, and uh, we have 13 and also 31, 32, 33 for the harmonicity of the map. And uh, the, the map is totally geodesic. We have these conditions. Local product Riemannian manifold, we have these conditions. <coughs> now, I'm going to give uh, pointwise slant Riemannian maps in complex space forms. Uh, the constant holomorphic sectional curvature is given by Yano and Cohn in 1984, uh, 34, the equation 34. <coughs> in uh, Bayram Shahin in 2017, the Gauss formu formula for Riemannian maps is given by and uh, 35, the equation 35. So we have 36. Uh, of course, we have vertical and the range of the map orthonormal basis. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the casoratic curvature. Uh, we have 37, 38, 39 and 40. And since uh, the map is a Riemannian maps, we have 41 and uh, uh, the scalar curvature of range of the map in 42 is given by 42. Uh, horizontal space, the casuality curvature on the horizontal space satisfied 43. And also uh, a corollary for uh, using 42, the equation 42, we have this corollary. And we know that uh, vertical, uh, vertical distribution take, if you take vertical distribution equals zero, you will get pointwise slant submanifolds. The, the part of the range of the map equals zero, you will get pointwise slant Riemannian submersion. So this notion is a generalization of them. But in, in, in from this uh, fact, the following curvature relation I haven't computed for both pointwise slant submanifolds and pointwise slant Riemannian submersion. And the scalar curvature of vertical space, the normalizes scalar curvature of vertical space, and the vertical causality curvature is given by this equation. So we have these theorems. Uh, sigma casuality curvature on uh, 
vertical and uh, vertical space. We have 44 and 45. Uh, the last part of my talk is point-wise slant Riemannian maps to Kahler manifolds. In this section, in this in this part, M1 is Riemannian map, Riemannian manifold, M2 is almost mission manifold. The first definition, uh, point-wise slant Riemannian maps from Kahler manifolds, we have a map from almost Hermitian manifold to Riemannian manifold, but here we have a map from a Riemannian manifold to almost Hermitian manifold. The function is a slant function. F is called pointwise slant Riemannian map. Independent, this function is this. Uh, the angle is independent of the choice of the non-zero tangent vector file in branch of the map. This, the now we give a non-trivial example for point by slant Riemannian maps. Uh, sorry for this. And uh, we have GF is a almost complex structure on uh, R4. We have a map from R2 to R4. Uh, the angle of is a function. Do you see it is a function? So F is a point by slant Riemannian maps. So we can obtain uh, many examples uh, if when we take a Riemannian submersion and isometric immersion, the combination of them is Riemannian map. So if we have pointwise Riemannian submersion and pointwise slant immersion, the combination of them is pointwise slant Riemannian map. Uh, these are our uh, references. And uh, of course, Baird and Wood book is also important. Uh, trying to find geometric slant sub manifolds. And uh, Garcia and Kupeli, Semi and their applications. And uh, Falcitelli, Lanus Pastore books is also important. <clears throat> for this story and uh, Bayram Shahin, you know, you see uh, his papers and his books too and uh, Yano and Cohn structure on manifolds. Thank you so much uh, for uh, participation to listen, listen to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, so Thank much you so much for such a nice presentation nice. on Riemannian maps. Do you, you see me? Your, yeah, yeah, I can see you. You can stop your uh, screen sharing. OK, OK. Online. I think he has left. Now we have reached the end of this international webinar and I would like to convey my deepest thanks to both the speakers of the day for their priceless contributions. So we have no words to express your gratitude. I also thanks all the participants who have been extremely cooperative in staying with us. I'm thankful wholeheartedly to each and every member of organizing committee of this webinar, especially our chairperson Dr. Deepak Gupta, who guided and encouraged us at each and every step. All of you are requested to stand up for national anthem. Thank 
joining us uh, we expect to meet you all in your future conferences or seminars thanks a lot okay have a good day so please uh, just wait uh, we can take some group picture all the participants please put your can you camera on am i audible to all yes sure okay for a group photo thank you so much thank you all of you thank you